Hey, thanks for making it to Veterans Info Tap. I'm glad you made it. Today I have some really important news that I want to share with you. I found an article and this prompted me to, you know, obviously do a video, but before I jump into the article, I want to explain to you why I want to share this information and really quite frankly, a lot of the articles or information that I do share, how my mind works when it comes to sharing this stuff. I look at it as a way to learn and uh, basically be strategic for ourselves, veteran community, uh, in regard to filing claims in some cases, uh, in this case specifically. This article is about PFAS, those forever chemicals. There's been a lot of uh, additional information and news stories about this, primarily with regard to the uh, firefighters on military bases using the foam spray that has forever chemicals in them, which is which is great. I mean, not great, right? But which is which is good information. But what I want you to think about when we when we go through this is okay. How can it relate to me? And how can I utilize this information to potentially file another claim, pushing me closer to that 100% if I'm not 100% already? So the way my mind works is, okay, PFAS, forever chemicals, all right? So now if I'm looking to file claims with the VA, we know that it has to be service connected. So, okay, well, there's a lot of news and information now about PFAS, the forever chemicals, and on military bases thrown throughout the, the U.S. and abroad. So <clears throat> PFAS, the forever chemicals, aren't just in the firefighting foam spray. It's in all kinds of stuff. And I can guarantee that it is probably in a lot of the standard issue equipment that we utilized during our time in service. So what I personally would do if I were looking to file another claim and I had ailments, I would wonder, okay, well, are any of these ailments caused from my time in service or as a result in my time of, of my time in service and I just don't realize it? So we know that the best thing that you could potentially do here is there's two ways you can go about it. If you have a set of existing conditions, Google search can PFAS forever chemicals cause these conditions? If the answer is yes, okay, then you can start working backwards. Now, the other way you could do it is what conditions does uh, uh, or do PFAS forever chemicals, what, what do they cause, right? What kind of illnesses, sicknesses, what have you, diseases, anything, what do they cause? So now you have a list of things you could work with, and then you also could have a list of current ailments that could potentially be caused by PFAS, forever chemicals. So now you have that. So now the question is, do I have a nexus? Do I have a link to my time and service? So now you could probably do a little bit of footwork and go, okay, well, what kind of stuff is PFAS in? Is it your poncho? Is it your poncho liner? Your sleeping bag? Your uh, plastic canteen that got uh, got handed over to you, your gas mask, uh, you know, um, of all the equipment that you were issued, does any of that standard issued equipment have PFAS, Forever Chemicals? You know, I could just picture that plastic canteen sitting in 110 degree heat with water in it that's, you know, 95 degrees, and maybe it's leaching some of these forever chemicals that you're drinking now, right? So just as an example, and I don't know if that's true or not, I mean, but this is what we'd have to research, right? So I'm just telling you how your mind can open up and start to stack some of this stuff together. If, if all of that comes into play and you find something that says, oh yeah, there's forever chemicals in whatever, some of your standard issued equipment, and you have a condition that's caused primarily by PFAS, you can bet bottom dollar that you probably have everything you need for a nexus letter from your doctor. You could explain the situation to your doctor. Doctor is going to write you up that nexus letter with that your condition uh, is caused by PFAS. Your exposure to PFAS is more than likely a result of your service and so forth. With that, you should have a really solid uh, uh, claim that you can file with that nexus, even though you do not have anything, um, you know, directly uh, service 
showing your, that it was uh, caused by service. The nexus and the fact that there was all these PFAS uh, that you were around while you were in service should probably give you enough to be able to substantiate your claim. So now let's jump into the article real quick. I'm sorry I spent so long on that, but I just want you to open up your mind a little bit and kind of think at least or at a, at a minimum at least now you know how I think right so that's what I think about when I'm reading these things or seeing any types of this information so hit the thumbs up subscribe share with a friend all that good stuff I really appreciate it, it helps to spread the word which is important if you're not a member consider joining helps the channel uh, immensely and it helps me to find you in the comments all right so jumping into it the headline here is not knowing is awful studies point to impact of PFAS on veterans, but resources are limited. All right, so the article starts off, multiple studies are linking a group of toxic chemicals to health conditions that former military and civilian firefighters may have developed after exposure to firefighting foam they used decades ago. It's a shame that my firefighter friends, when they were it's a shame that my firefighter friends, when they were diagnosed with cancer, didn't know about the risks of the foam, said Les Palmerville, a Navy veteran uh, and Beaver Creek resident. I've lost a lot of people who also served to all different kinds of cancer. Officials at White Patterson, Wright Patterson Air Force Base say they are taking multiple steps to prevent harm from exposure to per and poly for blah, 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 substances, PFAS, uh, a group of powerful toxic chemicals used in firefighting foam for decades. More than 700 military installations are likely contaminated with PFAS, according to the Environmental Working Group, an organization that studies health and the environment. Research about PFAS and service members. Although the research of PFAS is ongoing, the National Cancer Cancer Institute is studying PFAS links to thyroid, kidney, uh, ovarian, and prostate cancer. More recently, a new federal study by the National Cancer Institute shows a strong connection between PFOS, a type of PFAS chemical, and testicular cancer. The study shows evidence that the U.S. Air Force service workers who were firefighters had elevated levels of PFAS in their bloodstreams and less risk for those who lived on installations with high levels of PFAS in the, in the drinking water. Military members with testicular cancer had higher blood levels of PFOS than those who had not been diagnosed with cancer, the study found. Research through the National Institute of Health that points to PFAS impact on lung function and its accumulation of, uh, of, of and its accumulation in lung tissue is also ongoing. Palmerville said he can't help but wonder if long-time exposure to PFAS chemicals in firefighting foam led to his health conditions and was tied in any way to deaths of some of his fellow firefighters. Palmerville served in the U.S. Navy for 12 years, and one of his duties was to protect his ship from fire. It's a role he took pride in, uh, as his father was a firefighter. Training to fight fires in the military in 1965 was, uh, was a different challenge than it is today, said Palmerville, who was stationed in Virginia at the time. Uniforms were lighter, the equipment was less extensive to start, the firefighter the firefighting foam of yesteryear and the foam of today are also uh, definitely different, he said. Producers of PFAS in the 40s, 1940s, created the precedent group of chemicals to extinguish flames, particularly fire sparked by fuel. Firefighting foam with PFAS became a common element at airports and military bases throughout the country. Locally, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base began using the firefighting foam in the 1970s. The U.S. Air Force began phasing out the use of firefighting foam that contained the most common types of PFAS, PFOS and PFOA, from 2015 to 2017, replacing it with a foam that was more environmentally responsible, according to a spokesperson. But this updated kind of firefighting foam contains other kinds of PFAS, newer versions that are more difficult to filter out of water uh, out of water treatment facilities due to their shortened chain molecules. So, the Air Force 
is continuing to aggressively pursue PFAS-free firefighting technologies in anticipation of an impending ban on the use of PFAS-containing PFAS containing foams. According to a statement provided by the U.S. Air Force, none of the commercially available PFAS-free foams meet Department of Defense strict safety standard to, rapid, to rapidly extinguish dangerous fuel fires. When the foam must be used uh, for emergencies, the Air Force treats each use as a spill response to limit PFAS release to the environment according to the military branch. <clears throat> Palmerville said that his life is currently filled with doctor appointments for issues related to breathing, but in but the night but the 77 year old isn't sure if PFAS in firefighting foam is related to his health condition in any way, and he's not sure if he'll ever know. Blood tests that show PFAS levels in the body exist, but they are not routine tests offered by most doctors' offices and health departments according to the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry. PFAS blood tests also cost hundreds of dollars to perform. Well, if you had to in order to get uh, a claim done, that might be something worth doing. Um, so a doctor once told Palmerville that his family may know PFAS impact on him after he dies and, and an autopsy is performed. Not knowing is awful, he said. Prevention efforts at military bases, department of uh, or departments that oversee the Dayton area military base have also, in recent years, investigated in big dollar or invested in big dollar changes to address PFAS. It's two water systems that tested higher than the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's proposed maximum contamination limit of four parts per trillion for PFOS and PFOA were in areas A and B of the base. Water from those systems is used on base, dormitories, fitness centers, and hundreds of other housing units used by base employees. Since 2015, the Department of Air Force has provided $44 million to address PFAS at Wright-Patterson Air Base. In 2017, the Air Force installed, or installed a PFAS treatment system uh, consisting of granular activated carbon at the base. According to the spokesperson, the Department of the Air Force also commented another six million in 2020 is uh, to conduct a remedial investigation at 26 foam release sites across the base. Another 29 million was committed to the construction of PFAS treatment systems at the base in 2024, and the Department of Air Force wide project at White at Wright Patterson Air Force Base is being conducted to evaluate potential sources of PFAS that are not related to firefighting foam. Ah, see? So there, if you've hung on for 12 and a half minutes, I'm sorry, um, this is what I'm talking about, right? So one sentence in here. So, backing up. Another $29 million was committed to the construction of PFAS treatment systems at the base in 2024 and a Department of Air Force-wide project at Wright Patterson Air Base is being conducted to evaluate potential sources of PFAS that are not related to firefighting foam. Right, so you can multiply that to every base, right? Uh, some help available for veterans. The Department of Veterans Affairs does not recommend blood testing for PFAS, saying on its website that blood tests cannot be linked to current or future health conditions or guide. Uh, medical treatment decisions, but that could soon change. Um, representative from uh, a rep congressional representative from Michigan, co-chair of the Congressional PFAS Task Force, in June introduced the Veterans Exposed to Toxic PFAS Act, which I had done a video on, which would require the VA to treat conditions linked to uh, exposure and provide disability benefits for those affected, including for testicular cancer. Uh, the last thing veterans and their families need to go through is a fight with the VA to get access to benefits we promised them when when they put the uniform on, uh, is what this representative has said. And uh, with that, we'll go ahead and conclude it there. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you. Have a great one. And remember, if we don't take care of each other, something went wrong. <laughs>